Hello, it is 12.57, and we're just going to wait a few more minutes until 1 o'clock, and then we will get the webinar underway. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to the What Works webinar series hosted by Workforce Windsor Essex. This episode is called What Works Utilizing Labor Market Information and will focus on informing government agencies how to find and use certain labor market research or labor market information resources. We understand that being aware of specific labor market information and knowing how to use it properly is important for government agencies so that they are able to do their jobs to the fullest potential. My name is Corey Shankin, and I will be the host of your webinar today. Through my time today, I hope to talk about our local population, some labor market information 101, local promising sectors and industry trends, and other projects, tools, and resources available from Workforce Windsor Essex. We have a lot of information to cover in a short amount of time, so we will try to keep this webinar moving at a good pace. That said, if you have any questions at any time, feel free to use the question slash discussion box on the right hand side of your screen. We will pause the webinar in order to answer your questions as we go along. If your question will be answered as part of our webinar material, then we will hold off answering it until we have reached that part of the webinar. You'll notice that there are handouts that we have provided as well. These are copies of some of our resources that may be of value to you. These are downloadable in the same menu on the top right hand side of your screen. If you are aware of any other peers in your field who would benefit from this webinar, then be sure to tell them we will be, we will be posting a recording of the webinar on our website so it will be available for viewing at a later date. So without further ado, let's start today's session. Some of the audience today might not be aware of exactly what we do at Workforce Windsor Essex. Workforce Windsor Essex serves the Windsor Essex region as the local employment planning council. At Workforce Windsor Essex, our mandate is to plan, facilitate and advocate for regional development defined as a development, retention and recruitment of a wide range of skilled workers to meet the current and future economic and social development needs of Windsor Essex. <coughs> A large part of what we look at is local labor market information, or LMI. This information is very important for the career process. However, what exactly is LMI? LMI is information about the jobs in any location, in our case, Windsor-Essex. LMI includes information about 
jobs that are available in certain locations and or sectors, salaries and or wages tied to jobs, employers that are hiring and or laying off, working conditions, what employers are looking for, for example, certain skill sets and employees, job areas that will likely grow or shrink, unemployment rates, the education and or training needed for certain jobs or sectors, and information about the people who are working in a location or sector. I will now refer the audience to our website. If you go to www.workforcewindsoressex.com slash local dash LMI, and these, all the links I will be showing today are available on a handout sheet available for download in your toolbar on the right hand side of your screen. Um, so you can check them at a later date. So this web page contains a hub for local LMI. So for example, if you wanted to know the levels of educational attainment for individuals in our region, just click on the corresponding link and you will be shown statistics once they load. Most of our statistics on this page come from Statistics Canada and this hub is a great way to access visually appealing labor market information. So now that it's loaded, you can see we have some helpful graphs and charts just to visualize the information that we've gathered for you. Continuing on. Continuing today's webinar with a brief overview of information about our region that may be of interest to you. Firstly, we'll take a look at our population. From 2011 to 2016, the population of Windsor-Essex has changed in size as well as age distribution. The population of Windsor-Essex had a 2.6 po a positive 2.6% change in population, which is an increase of 10,171 people. Windsor-Essex also has an aging population. Age groups over the age of 55 saw the greatest percentage increases to, in their groups between 2011 and 2016, with ages 65 to 74 experiencing the largest increase of 26.3%. This is likely due to an influx of retirees from outside the area. The prime working age population of 25 to 54 saw an average decrease in population by 3%. We can also take a look at our region's educational attainment. Overall, the population of Windsor-Essex has a range of educational attainment. 40% of those in Windsor-Essex age 25 to 64 have a secondary school diploma or less, while 7% have an apprenticeship or trade certificate or diploma, and 52% have a college or university level education. Windsor-Essex has a lower level of educational attainment than the Ontario average. There can be a negative effect of 40% of the working age population having only a high school diploma or less as employers may find it hard, harder to find skilled positions. And this population may find it difficult to find stable, fairly paid employment. One in four people in Windsor-Essex is an immigrant, which refers to a person who is or has ever been a landed immigrant or a permanent resident. A total of 85,810 people in Windsor-Essex are immigrants. Of these immigrants, 10,800 are newcomers who settled in Windsor-Essex between 2011 and 2016. A newcomer is an immigrant who has been here for five years or less. Considering the population in Windsor-Essex increased by 10,171 people between 2011 and 2016, Windsor-Essex might have otherwise had a decrease in population without the arrival of newcomers. Immigrants are well-educated, with 70% possessing a minimum of a high school diploma and 47% possessing a post-secondary education. The majority of those who migrate into Windsor-Essex are from outside of Canada. Oftentimes in our work, we are approached with inquiries related to in-demand jobs. We are asked questions such as, what are promising sectors and what industries are currently hiring in our area? So our current local promising sectors include construction, professional scientific and technical services, healthcare and social assistance, manufacturing, repair and maintenance, and education. So we'll go through a few highlights for each of these sectors. 
The first sector we will be looking at today will be construction. As you may know, we have had a few large construction projects coming our way, including the Gordie Howe International Bridge and the Mega Hospital. There will be specific roles required for the actual bridge building, such as iron workers and heavy equipment operators, but there are numerous additional roles that will be, need, that will be required for other bridge-related projects, such as carpenters for building tool booths, etc. There are currently 7,977 jobs in Windsor-Essex in the construction sector, and the top five occupations expecting growth are construction trades laborers, heavy equipment operators, electricians, carpenters, and iron workers. The second sector we will be reviewing today will be professional, scientific, and technical services. Tech can involve anything from mobile app development to software development to social media or graphic design. It is an ever-changing sector with new jobs such as social media writer popping up all the time. We have a number of larger and smaller firms involved in tech in our region and many community members are employed across the border in this sector. I apologize if you weren't able to see the slides uh, for the last few moments. I wasn't aware. One of my colleagues came in to tell me. Uh, just so you know, this presentation is available for download in the handouts for the slides that I did miss. So I apologize for that, but it should be back up on your screen now. The top five, uh, there are currently 4,128 jobs in Windsor-Essex in this, in this sector, and the top five occupations expecting growth are mechanical engineers, information systems analysts, biological engineers, paralegals, computer programmers, and interactive media developers. The next sector we will cover is healthcare and social assistance. This sector is currently experiencing what is known as a silver tsunami, as we witness an increased number of retirements in certain occupations, as well as increased demand for healthcare services. There are currently 20,353 jobs in Windsor-Essex in this sector, and the top five occupations expecting growth are registered nurses, nurse aides, orderlies, and patient service associates, food counter attendants and kitchen helpers, social and community service workers, and nursing coordinators and supervisors. The next sector we will be going over today is manufacturing. Manufacturing is currently the sector in Windsor-Essex that offers the most jobs. So individuals often feel as though manufacturing is dark, dirty, and dangerous, and they really don't want to go there. However, this is not the case whatsoever. Many jobs in manufacturing involve the use of a computer to guide machines automatically. Manufacturing is the largest sector in Windsor, Essex, and offers the most current jobs. This sector is extremely important to the region for its economic imperative. There are currently 30,685 jobs offered in manufacturing in Windsor-Essex, and the top five occupations expecting growth are laborers in metal fabrication, machining tool operators, industrial engineering and manufacturing technologists and technicians, plastic products assemblers, finishers and inspectors, and metal products machine operators. Another sector that ties in with manufacturing is repair and maintenance. We live in a car-driven area, so there, will, so there will always be a need for repairs. Particularly, there is a high demand for truck repair. Truck, remer, truck, excuse me, truck repair should remain to be in demand with the high volume of trucking conducted in our region, with expected numbers of trucks on the road to increase in the near future. Specialized cleaner is a job path to consider in this sector. Think about the inside of your car or a truck or trailer and the materials that are being carried. Many of these trucks carry hazardous materials, so such as 
such as chemicals, and they need to be cleaned out properly before the next uh, load is taken in the same container. So there are currently 2014 jobs in the sector in Windsor, Essex, and the top five occupations expecting growth are welders and related machine operators, automotive service technicians, truck and bus mechanics and mechanical repairers, specialized cleaners, laborers and metal fabrication, and contractors and supervisors of, me of mechanic trades. The final sector we will be reviewing today will be education. Now this is a sector that has gone on and off of our in-demand sector list, but currently it is on it. So we will be reviewing it today. Retirements in the sector and an increase in our population due to immigration is driving up enrollment in schools. French speaking also continues to be a demand in this sector. There are many roles to consider when looking at education. There are currently 4,062 jobs in education in Windsor, Essex, and the top five occupations expecting growth are elementary and secondary school teacher assistants, post-secondary teaching and research assistants, secondary and elementary school teachers and educational counselors, janitors, caretakers, and building superintendents, and elementary school and kindergarten teachers. The next part of this webinar will uh, go over some information that may prove helpful to government agencies. So some, some information that may prove helpful to government agencies is the characteristics of the labor force in Windsor-Essex. Overall, the labor force was healthy in 2016 with the unemployment rate in the region at 7.3%. However, the majority of unemployment is located disproportionately in the city of Windsor and the township of Peely. Windsor's unemployment rate is more concerning as more employment opportunities are available in the city. It is important that work continues to be done with those in Windsor who face barriers to employment to ensure they are able to access employment opportunities. The labor force in our region saw significant improvement from 2011 to 2016 as employment grew and unemployment dropped. The only concern was the increase in those not in the labor force, meaning those who are not working or actively looking for work, which increased by 3,090 people and had a negative effect on the region's overall participation rate. A challenge that Windsor-Essex faces due to its labor force characteristics is one of the lowest participation rates in all of Canada. A low participation rate hinders the ability of employers to find employees as the available workforce is smaller than it could be. An opportunity that can be taken advantage of with Windsor-Essex's current labor force landscape is to encourage populations who are currently not in the labor force to enter the labor force. There are a number of actions that can be taken to do this including more affordable and conveniently located childcare, increased microemployment opportunities, fair wages for low-skilled positions, and investments in public transportation to ensure job opportunities can be accessed by all. From consultations with employers in our region, we found that 78% of those consulted face challenges in recruiting. Much of this is due to a lack of qualified candidates, which has direct ties to the region's low participation rate. A helpful resource that Workforce Windsor-Essex provides is our quarterly survey results. Workforce Windsor-Essex asks employers to complete surveys each quarter or every three months to help improve the access to and quality of the region's labor market information. We look at the demand side of our workforce through surveying local employers to understand in-demand occupations, hard to fill occupations, and skills to fill these jobs. Following the conclusion of each survey, a bulletin with the findings is released to the public and is available on the Workforce Windsor-Essex website. All data collected in these surveys remains confidential and is only reported on the aggregate. I am now going to show you our web page for our quarterly surveys and bulletins. So it's here and the address is www.workforcewindsoressex.com slash quarterly dash survey. Of course, this link is included on your handout sheet that you can download. So this is the site, this is the web page here and you can see the results of our quarterly surveys here. Uh, this took a while to download earlier, so I pre-downloaded it. But if you click on this, it will eventually 
load this for you and it has some very helpful information on it. So an example of helpful data that can be withdrawn from our quarterly survey results are which jobs are in demand and which jobs are hard to fill. A position that is in demand is, is one that employers are currently hiring many workers for. A position that is hard to fill is one that employers are having difficulty filling, which can be due to a multitude of reasons, such as lack of qualified candidates. Our latest quarterly survey identified the following as some of the top hard to fill positions in Windsor, Essex. So as you can see here, this is our hard to fill positions section. And you can see chef, CNC, machinist, controls engineer, cook, cost estimator, dye designer, mold maker, mechanical engineer, and a full list of the hard to fill positions that our employers identified to us over the past quarter. Going back to the presentation now. Wait to make sure you guys can actually see it. Okay, continuing, the data we collect from our quarterly survey is just some of the important labor force information that we disseminate into the community. Some other helpful info we gather comes from tools we use inside the office, such as the program Talent Neuron. Talent Neuron is actually one of the many research tools we use at Workforce in Windsor Essex to conduct our research. Its primary function is to allow viewers to see job demand reports for specific jobs in specific regions. An example of the information you can find on Talent Neuron is the top skills employers are hiring for in a region by tracking online job postings related to the job. For example, in 2017, there were 14,872 online job postings in the region from almost 5,000 unique employers. The top five technical skills employers were looking for were as follows. Blueprint reading, freight plus software, forklift operation, bilingualism, and preventative maintenance. The top five soft skills, according to employers that they were looking for, are as follows. Detail-oriented, oral and written communication, team player, customer service-oriented, and dependability. We've noticed that soft skills have been something employers have been stressing more lately and looking for more of those in their, in their potential employee candidates. These data inquiries allow us at Workforce Windsor Essex to identify certain challenges and opportunities in the community. For example, through a multitude of research conducted with these tools, we identified that there are not enough candidates to fill positions and businesses may not be operating at full capacity as positions go unfilled or are filled by individuals who are not fully qualified for the given position. Of course, we attempt to come up with solutions for each of the challenges we identify. For example, to address the issue above, our community could find ways to educate or train the unemployed and youth about in-demand positions and connect them to services to find these jobs. Now, you may be wondering, how can I have access to this type of data? Well, did you know you can make a data request to Workforce Windsor Essex to request information such as the data I just spoke about and data we find on tools like Talent Neuron? So, I'm going to bring us back to the website and show you how you can do a data request. So all over our website, you will notice this button here. This is on most pages. I think this is on every page except for the landing page. So if you want some labor market information data, you can click on that link and it will bring you to this page. And you can fill out your name, your job title, maybe some text you want to add, um, and your email, and you can select what type of labor market information you are requesting. So if you want labor force data by gender, by municipality, you can click those options and send in the request. This request gets sent directly to myself or one of our other research associates, and 
we usually we're pretty good with our response rate to data requests they're also free and depending on the size of our request we can usually provide you a response within 24 hours I'll go back to the presentation now At Workforce Windsor-Essex, we believe that labor market information and other forms of data are very valuable and should be shared with community stakeholders as often as possible to build a stronger workforce and working relations within the community. The next section of our webinar will be dedicated to the numerous resources and tools available from Workforce Windsor-Essex that can be used in a multitude of ways to create a stronger and more well-informed workforce in Windsor-Essex. The first is our guide to recruitment and retention for small business in Windsor-Essex. This guide was developed to help small businesses consider different approaches for recruiting and retaining talent, including topics like interviewing, onboarding, offering perks, investing in employees, and others. This, I will show you how to access this guide on our website. So if you go to our website, www.workforcewindsoressex.com slash supporting small business in Windsor-Essex, of course, this link is available on the handout that you can download. You will be brought to the landing page for the project, be provided with a project overview, a uh, project status, the project has been completed, and you can download the resource in either French or in English. As an employer, sorry, I just want to say an example of how you could use the previous resource. So as an employer, for example, you can use the guide to help you with recruitment and retention of your talent for your small business, considering local best practices and, low, and labor market information as you implement strategies found in this guide. Another resource we have available for the community is our cross-border employment in the Windsor-Essex and Southeastern Michigan Corridor Report. With our close proximity to the U.S., there are thousands of Windsor-Essex residents who cross the border daily for work and education. I believe the exact number is 6,695 commuters who report a source of income from the United States living in Windsor-Essex on the last uh, Statistics Canada census. So um, this phenomenon makes the commuter flows in, in Windsor-Essex unique. This project aimed to gather information on the segment of our workforce mobility this project aimed, excuse me, this project aimed to gather information on this segment of our workforce mobility across the border. It also highlighted unique cross-border partnerships in workforce development. So I'll bring you back to our webpage. And if you go to this address, of course, it's on the handout, the link, you will be brought to the landing page for the project. Again, a project overview and the project has been complete, and you can download the resource again in both English and French. In relation to the movement of commuters across the border, Workforce Windsor-Essex just released a project, NAFTA Recommendations from Windsor-Essex. As Canada prepared for official consultations, we began to talking to businesses and commuters about what works and what could be improved with the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA. The results of surveys with stakeholders are available on our website. In addition, we released the final report that outlines the project, highlights the survey results, and shares thematic recommendations with government. So I will show you where this is on our website now. This was just released 
So you can come to our website, NAFTA Recommendations from Windsor-Essex. Uh, of course, you're provided with a project overview and the project status, which is complete. And you should be able to download this in English and French. I think this one should be French. We'll check, though. And if it's not, we'll get it fixed. doesn't matter right now if it's not French we'll find out and we'll get it fixed for you but it should be available in French and English so here is the report along with our recommendations that were released and here are the survey results and he, sorry here's the report available in English and French so I was right it is there So an example of how you can use the NAFTA report is we mainly mailed it out to government officials and municipal officials to see if they would take our recommendations into account to the consultation table. But you can also read the report to learn more about the implications of the NAFTA renegotiation and the potential impact on the cross-border workforce. Another upcoming project we have in the works that we'll be releasing this spring is called Newcomers, Your Skilled Workforce. We released a profile of local newcomer skill sets, highlighting their work experiences and education, demonstrating an available workforce. Over 300 newcomers have been surveyed with the help of local service providers, identifying their skills and past work experiences. Best practice stories, suggestions for diversifying workforces, and an overview of the business case for a diverse workforce will also be highlighted in the profile. So if you go to our website again, and workforcewindsrestics.com slash newcomers your skilled workforce, of course you're provided with a project overview. This one has a project status, um, which is still in progress. So you will not be able yet to download a French or English version of the report, but you will be able to after it is released, which is coming up soon, released this spring. Um, so in, for an example of a way this report can be used is employment service providers can use the profile and skill sets to increase their ability to work with newcomers and to better match newcomers with available employment opportunities. And an example, another example of maybe how employers could use this is to recognize the skills of an available workforce and connect with employment service providers to find newcomers to meet their workforce needs. And we believe newcomers would be are uh, one of the solutions to filling the current skills gap uh, that we find in Windsor-Essex. <laughs> Moving back to the slideshow. Another project or resource we have available that is related to the skill set of our workers is our skills matrix. Workforce Windsor-Essex produced an inventory of the types of skills and skill levels required for in-demand occupations. This information was collected directly from employers, job postings, and employment and training services. This inventory also provides a common definition for each skill type, such as foundational skills, soft skills, technical skills, and literacy skills. You will see the skills matrix is available also on our website, um, workforcefringeressics.com slash skills dash matrix. There's a project overview, and this uh, project was released in LEP in uh, LEP key round one, so it is complete, and the booklets are available for download in English and French. So an example, sorry, 
too fast. An example of how this skills matrix can be used is, let's say you're an employment service provider, you can review the occupations and skills with your audience to encourage them to consider in-demand occupations. So speaking of skills needed for in-demand jobs, we also have projects dedicated to these in-demand jobs. For example, we have Help Bridge Your City Occupations for the Gordie Howe International Bridge. So with the upcoming construction of the Gordie Howe International Bridge, there are significant opportunities for employment as this historical project, his, sorry, historic project will require a skilled workforce on both sides of the Canada-US border. Workforce Windsor Essex conducted research to identify what training could be implemented locally to ensure we have the workforce required to fill these key positions. So once again, this resource is available on our website at workforcewindsoressex.com slash help dash bridge dash your dash city. Um, again, it's available on the handout. Uh, there's a project overview is provided on this page and downloads to the skills inventory booklet in English and French. Um, and also a download to an occupations card. So what we did, I'll show you this card. You can get it to download in time. So what we did is create a card for help bridging help and we called it help bridging your city and we anticipated what maybe the in-demand jobs would be for the future bridge project and we listed them on a card here. We also provided the occupations listed in bold are anticipated to be in-demand program and sorry excuse me the Occupations listed in bold are anticipated to be in demand and programs listed in italics are available locally at St. Clair College. So you can see that St. Clair has a lot of training opportunities for these in demand jobs. We'll return now to the PowerPoint presentation. So an example of how this project can be used is um, say you are an employment service provider, you can review the occupations with your audience to encourage them to consider occupations in construction and maybe you want to highlight the ones that have training pathways available locally in Windsor Essex, for example, at St. Clair College. Moving on. Another great project and resource we have relating to in-demand jobs in our region is literally called the in-demand jobs and career profiles. We have developed a list of in-demand occupations with accompanying career profiles for each. These profiles detail the duties, wages, skills, working conditions, and career pathways associated with a given occupation. Now, there are a few links associated with this project, so we will visit each right now. The first one is here. Um, it's just a project overview. The project status is complete. Um, we have different sources of materials for this project. It's not just one report. We release many tools and resources. So I will show you these. So associated, we have a list here of all the in-demand jobs and you can click on one of these in-demand jobs. So let's say you are interested in becoming a chef. Um, you can click on the profile here and it will take you to a career profile. These are also available in French. That gives you a uh, definition of what chefs are, a wage and salary information for our local region, common skills as it in job posting, job duties, working conditions, potential career pathways as you move on in the career, and education and local uh, education and pathways. So there is an apprenticeship pathway for a chef. We give you the requirements for that. And we do have local um, educational pathways to get into being a chef. So we list them as well. That is one part or one resource we have created as a part of this project. So um, associated with each of our in-demand jobs, we do have, not yet, we are still working on completing the whole list, but we do have interviews with some of 
with some people who work in these in-demand jobs. So, for example, we'll go to David. He was a chef at Bread Meets Bread. Um, so if you're interested in becoming a chef, you can look at one of these resources and he tells you how he thought of the idea for the restaurant. He tells you how he got into cooking. Maybe if you're young and you are looking for ways to start getting into cooking, you can look at this uh, profile for an example and guidance. Uh, what have you learned working in a bigger restaurant that you brought to your own place? What does your day-to-day -day look like? How did your college program help you prepare? What advice would you give to someone? How is it being in downtown Windsor? And some great pictures to go along with some great looking sandwiches. So uh, this is just another resource uh, available, very helpful, sort of like a guidance resource for anyone who wants to, who is interested in joining the occupation. And finally, last but not least, the, uh, so, we also created and just released an extremely helpful tool called We Explore. And you can also get to We Explore from this page. Um, here it is, a link right here. Or you could also go straight to the link, which I already had ready, called, and it's just slash We Explore. So it's kind of over overwhelming when you start here. Uh, all these jobs pop up. The ones that are dark blue are, are currently on our in-demand jobs list. So in order to make this less overwhelming, you might want to, you can uh, sort by sector. So let's say you want, let's keep up with the chef um, idea and you want to be a chef. So first of all, you can hover over it and the arrows and other um, jobs that get highlighted are jobs in the same career path. So if you want to know how to get into the position and where to start, maybe you want to start as a cook and then move up to chef. Or if you are already a chef and you want to know where you can go from there and become an instructor or potentially a restaurant owner. So you can also sort these by median salary. So depending on the salary, the bubble is smaller or larger and you can size by job openings. So the little teal number at the bottom is actually linked to active job postings on the internet. So if I click on chef, you will see a quick job description, wage and salary information for the area, the skills, and four active job postings that are available right now in our region that are tracked online and more information. If you click on this English or this French link here, you will be uh, directed to a download of one of the career profiles that I showed you earlier with extensive details on the career, such as the training and education pathways to get into the job. So this is a tool that we just released. We've um, heard some great feedback about it and we hope that it helps making career the career journey process easier for those looking for an in-demand job in Windsor, Essex. This is um, this is the landing site for our profiles. If you were wondering how to get there directly, so it's just workforcewindsoressex.com/workforce-profiles, and this, of course, is available on the handout sheet with the links available for download. Let me go back to the presentation now. So supporting job seekers with resources to make their job search easier is something we are mandated to do at Workforce Windsor Essex. So a resource, and it's no, we're not just mandated to do it. We also like doing it, and it is part of our interest. So a resource we have available that addresses this is your job search, overcoming barriers for job seekers. So this resource assists job seekers in their journey to find a job, providing local resources and tips for finding employment, particularly for newcomers, recent graduates, persons on Ontario Works, and persons who are underemployed. It also includes job fair guides for job seekers and employers. So back to the website really quickly. I'll show you the landing page for this project. Here it is. Um, the link is available, of course, for download. So you come to the... You come to the page and there are there's a project overview so the project is complete now it is available for 
download in English and French. Um, there are also results to the surveys we conducted in order to make sure that we were doing this uh, project properly. So you can look at those survey results if you're interested in those and some job fair guides for the job fair guides are really helpful. I'll show you these right now. So let's say you are a job seeker we just provide you with a list a checklist of things that we believe will make you more successful at a job search so for example before the job fair do your research re excuse me research what companies will be there what are their missions values and open positions create questions you can ask the employers based on this information stuff to do on your way to the job fair at the job fair and after the job fair so just making sure you get the best um and most efficient uh, job fair experience as possible. Some people aren't aware of different techniques and tactics that they should have for those kind of events. So we help people with that. Turning to the presentation. So an example of how you could use uh, the job seekers um, resource is, for example, if you're an employment service provider, you could share the resource with your clients to assist them in their job search. And you could also use this guide to help connect you with employment services and develop strategies as a job seeker. Um, we also have a couple more upcoming projects in the works. The first of these is our Decoding the Information and Communication Technology Workforce, or ICT Workforce. And this project aims to increase development, attraction, and retention of ICT talent in Windsor-Essex through three different initiatives. First, Workforce Windsor-Essex hosted an ICT leadership table for each quarter for employers, educators, students, workers, and community partners in ICT to meet and discuss local ICT issues and develop actions to address these issues. Second, we have worked with local ICT companies to develop six profile videos to showcase ICT opportunities in Windsor-Essex. Third, we have surveyed students, workers, employers, and educators to gain their perspective on ICT in Windsor-Essex and have used these results along with existing data to write a report on the state of ICT in Windsor-Essex as well as a bulletin with recommendations to create an ICT brain gain in Windsor-Essex. So you can learn more about tech and ICT in Windsor at the following link back to our website um so workforce windsor essex slash tech slash test ah, excuse me tech dash sector um we do there are, so you can learn about tech meet tech learn tech grow tech recruit tech and network tech um a lot of helpful resources here to learn more about the ict community in windsor essex which is growing and of course ICT cuts across all different sectors now. Um, there are, let's say, construction or manufacturing. There's computers and tech involved in all of their day-to-day -day activities now. So if you get a job in tech, just think you're mo most likely qualified for a job in across most sectors. So it's something to think about. to the presentation here. Um, another one of our upcoming projects, uh, we referred to the participation rate earlier. So another one of our upcoming projects is examining the participation rate. And Windsor-Essex has one of the lowest participation rates in Canada, meaning a large portion of the population is not looking for work when they technically could be. So we develop, we have developed, um, we are going to develop a video report on the low participation rate, participation rate, excuse me, examining the factors behind the low rate and what we can do to address it. So you can go to our website again. And we have um a page here that is uh, with a project overview and a project status in project. You'll learn a little bit more about the history of our participation rate and how it's been low and um, in Windsor-Essex and 
We're excited for the release of this project later this year. Um, returning to the PowerPoint. So the majority of the resources that I just went through with you are created by the local employment planning council. So in December, 2015, Workforce Windsor Essex was informed by the Ontario Ministry of Advanced Education and Skills Development that it was selected to the local employment planning council or LEPKE, as we like to call it, it's easier, quicker, for the Windsor Essex area as a part of a pilot project. The objective of the LEPKE pilot is aimed at improving conditions in the local communities through improved collection and dissemination of local labor market information and community engagement to drive local approaches in the planning and delivery of employment and training services. Some of the LEPKE activities include community partnership, service coordination for employers, integrated local planning, research and innovation, analysis and dissemination of local labor market information, sharing and sharing of best practices. The activities of the LEPKE are governed by a central planning table that is comprised of a variety of stakeholders in Windsor-Essex from different sectors. In addition, there were three working groups, employer engagement, service provision, and intergovernmental partnerships. With the, within this structure, we are engaging all of our existing partners and exploring and forming new partnerships. This project is funded by the Government of Canada or partly by the Government of Canada and the Government of Ontario. Another project that we have at Workforce Windsor-Essex is WeSkills. As part of this project, Workforce Windsor-Essex provides the following programs and services to the community. Our WeSkills database. This is comprised of local resumes that the City of Windsor can use to help businesses find potential candidates for hire. The WeSkills office also connects job seekers and employers to local service providers and programs and engages the community with booths and workshops at local events. They are also, WeSkills department is also responsible for a very helpful resource we have here at Workforce Windsor Essex called WeJobs. This is a service supported through WeSkills that distributes new job postings and information about upcoming job fairs and training opportunities to the public in the form of email blasts several times each week. You can actually sign up for WeJobs on our website. So I will show you that really quickly. Um, WorkforceWindsorEssex.com slash WeJobs. Uh, so you can join the mailing list. So if you are a job seeker, first name, last name, and your email, and you'll want to sign up for job posting and job fair news. Um, you can also sign up for different stuff so project updates and news releases from workforce men's Essex, monthly labor market information which would probably be the most helpful for government agencies attending this webinar and also windsor essex local immigration partnership information sharing so you just get put on an email list and we skills emails you with very helpful resources that will provide you with very very valuable information so thank you we skills for what you do um, returning now to the PowerPoint presentation. And finally, last but not least, a project run out of our, um, Sorry, one more thing about WeSkills. They also identify, collect, and share news articles relating to business growth and expansion, new apprenticeship job postings, and job postings that require French-speaking candidates. And now, last but not least, we have the Windsor-Essex Local Immigration Partnership, or WeLIP. WeLIP is an initiative of Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenships Canada, or IRCC, to encourage communities across Ontario to develop a comprehensive plan for the delivery of newcomer services. The WeLIP initiative represents a process to examine the whole system of services currently available and considers how the system could be enhanced to facilitate access to service and to promote the long-term settlement and integration of immigrant newcomers into Windsor and Essex County. The WELIP engages stakeholders through information sharing events and a locally driven strategic planning process to help win make Windsor-Essex a more welcoming and inclusive community. 
The partnership strives to assist non-settlement service providers and the community in developing a greater understanding of newcomer needs and services. So thank you to WELIP as well for all the work that they do in the Windsor-Essex community. Um, so that brings us actually to the end of our presentation or webinar today. We know that we've just shared a lot of information with you. So at this time, we'd like to take any remaining questions that may be out there. As we close, we would encourage you some time to take some time to brown. We would, excuse me. We would encourage you to take some time to browse our website. As you process what you see on the site and what you've heard today, feel free to reach out to us if there's any additional support we can provide you. Our contact or my, oh, excuse me. My contact information will be available on the screen in just a second. Sorry about that. There it is. There's my contact information if you have any questions or just feel free to email me. Um, additionally, we would appreciate it if you could complete the brief survey that you will find on the closing screen. Your responses will help us in preparing future webinars. So thank you for spending your time with us today and hopefully you learned a lot. <laughs> um, it doesn't look like there are any further questions. So I'm going to close the webinar for today and just like to say thanks again for attending today's webinar. Bye.